all the lights were blinking red before 9-11. Apparently, obviously, all of us missed it. Would you say that there's multiple blinking red lights out there? I see blinking lights everywhere I turn. The blinking lights are now showing up much brighter for the United States as multiple states are now evacuating people as an FBI warned about bomb threats was recently released. Now, this warning was sent to states like Connecticut, Georgia, Kentucky, Michigan, Mississippi, and Montana, and it is expected that more are coming. And yes, while some of these threats may not be as credible as the rest of them, it makes you just wonder, how far will the conflicts in the Ukraine, Russia, and Israel, how far can they actually reach? And at the end of it, you gotta ask yourself, are we still safe inside of our own country? A series of bomb threats were made to multiple state capitals across the United States on Wednesday. Officials and law enforcement in Kentucky, Mississippi, Michigan, Montana, and Georgia confirmed to CBS News that Capitol buildings in their states received threats. The complexes were evacuated as a precaution, but no explosives w were found. For more, let's bring in CBS News Justice Department reporter R Rob Legary from Washington. Rob, what do we know? Are they connected? What is the FBI saying about uh, these threats? Hey, yeah, John, thanks for having me. Good evening. So right now, we don't know much about these threats, but what we do know is that the FBI said that they are hoax threats that they do take seriously. They said that they've evaluated the threats, and there's no credible threat to any of these state capitals or complexes uh, that occurred today. But they said the danger here lies to innocent citizens because you have to evacuate this creates a state of panic, and the FBI says that they urge all citizens throughout the country to stay alert and to report any suspicious activity to law enforcement. In some ways, we should probably be thankful that these were hoaxes. But in the off chance that they weren't, then what would happen then? I mean, we shouldn't avoid the hypothetical situation where we actually see attacks here at home. Like, we've already seen cyber attacks on multiple federal agencies since last year, right? But I want to ask a question, and I really want you guys to decide on this one. On a scale of one to five, five being the highest and the best, and one being the lowest, how safe do you feel right now as both an American citizen and as a resident of this country? Comment down below, and while you guys are thinking about that, don't forget to drop a like for the video and subscribe to the channel for more news and updates like this one if you want to stay informed i really appreciate that guys now evacuations weren't the only thing that happened in fact it also led to brief lockdowns and disrupted government work so this mass email that was sent out specified that these bombs would go off within just a few hours although some states like wyoming oklahoma nebraska missouri and maryland also received these threats to their capitals but they chose to remain open maybe the threats there were easier to do deduce as hoaxes rather than the others that I just talked about. Back here in the U.S. tonight to the bomb threats targeting at least a dozen state capitals, emails claiming explosives were, quote, well hidden and that people would end up dead. Evacuations ensued as teams then swept through buildings in multiple states. Tonight, authorities now investigating who is behind this hoax. Here's ABC's Steve Osinsami from Georgia, one of the states rattled by these threats. With political stakes and tension so high, authorities today had to take the threat seriously. A bomb threat called into at least a dozen state houses across the country, sending law enforcement officials sweeping for explosives that they did not find. People were running from state capitals in Montana, Kentucky, Michigan, Georgia, and others. Federal investigators tonight say that the email that triggered it all came from outside the country. The note sent to lawmakers was just a few sentences saying that the explosives were well hidden and that people would end up dead. I'm not even sure what would motivate somebody to do something like that that could potentially result in loss of life. In Maine, Secretary of State Shenna Bellows had a similar incident happen on Friday where someone called police to her home for no need. It was less than 48 hours after she decided that former President Donald Trump needed to be removed from the state's primary ballot. What happened today against the Capitol or what happened at my house on Friday night, they're designed to make people afraid to send a message. The FBI says that in this environment, even when the threats appear to be fake early on, they still have to take them very serious. And there's also another trend that's hitting some of our lawmakers. It's called swatting. And no, it's not the kind that you do for flies, okay? This one's a lot more serious. Double digits. There was over, over 10 officers that responded. 
That's State Representative Kevin Miller. He's one of the elected officials whose home was swatted on Tuesday under the pretense of a shooting situation. Miller tells me he first heard sirens in the afternoon. Out here in rural Licking County, you know, you don't hear them a lot. Um, so I heard them and they started getting louder and louder. He says he walked out to his porch and saw an officer blocking this road to the left of his house. And that's when I knew this is this is getting crazy. Something yeah. something's going on. My son saw off the porch there. He said, Dad, they have rifles. Well, they have rifles because they were dispatched to a shooting situation. Now, I want to go ahead and address something here. We're not going to dwell into political parties or anything of that sort. We're actually going to address this as Americans, all right? So these fake calls or emails, they're being much more frequent. And to date, I haven't seen any one of them investigated for them. Maybe something's actually going on behind the scenes, but imagine this for just a second. What if investigations aren't moving forward because there's no leads? What if these people are using burner phones and gadgets, stuff that our local law enforcement can't locate. The fear here is that these hoaxes, these, I don't know, they're like pranks for some people, right? That these could theoretically lead to some officers being a bit more relaxed. Kind of like that story. Which was it? The boy who cried wolf? Y'all remember that? Where prankster just basically kept yelling around town that a wolf was coming and the villagers always fell for it. Except that one time, that one time when a wolf was actually coming, but the damage was done. The villagers let their guard down. Uh, and I know it's a little bit of a reach, but what if this happens here in our country? And another thing, it's no surprise that 2023 and 2024 will both go down in history books for a lot of reasons. And let me tell you guys, the 2024 presidential election is going to be a doozy. I mean, we're already seeing the false flags lining up for us. It's going to be so unique that there's probably going to be a write up in history books as it happens. And understand that this is a very polarizing topic. In fact, so polarizing that threats are being directed at Supreme Court justices because of it. Now, of course, we can think of this as either about former President Donald Trump or President Biden. But here's a twist, folks. What if we're being intentionally divided by something other than political parties? Because we can have different opinions on things. That's fine. We can argue all we want. That's all right. But this is also now teetering to a point unlike we've ever seen before. And some experts argue that this is probably due to the people coming in through the borders, not people who are legitimately looking for help, but bad actors who come from different countries that generally don't like us. Tonight, amid the record number of migrant crossings along the southern border, three U.S. mayors sounding the alarm, saying their cities are at a breaking point. Just today, Texas Governor Greg Abbott ordering a Boeing 77 plane carrying 350 asylum seekers to arrive in Rockford, Illinois. The passengers immediately bus to Chicago. Abbott, who for months has been busing migrants to so-called sanctuary cities, starting the fights after Chicago officials began impounding the buses used to transport them. Similar scenes in Denver and New York City, where more unannounced buses arrived. Since August of last year, Abbott has sent nearly 30,000 migrants to New York City alone, prompting the three mayors to require bus companies to give advance notice and additional restrictions for dropping passengers off with stiff penalties, saying the current system is harmful. This is a concern for many of us. And like I said, experts are asking, what if these fake calls, these fake reports, what if they're coming from anyone else other than the American people? I mean, we've let around a few million people inside this country within just a short period of time, some of which are actually included in terrorist watch lists. So the expectation is that we're we're going to see more threats. We're going to receive more warnings. And credible or not, it would be appreciated if our government and the powers that be take the time to protect the American people. But what do you guys think? Make sure you share your thoughts on this down below. And before I go, I just want to thank you guys for your time. Keep safe and I'm going to catch you guys on the next one.